the Feast of Theophany, the Festival of Lights. And in this great feast, we have many themes. And I could talk about many different aspects of the Feast of Theophany, but today I'd like to do something a little bit different, which is to share with you everything that is contained within the service of the great blessing of the waters. Some of you were able to be here for that blessing on the eve of Theophany and then on the, the day of Theophany itself, but some of you weren't. And while I could offer my own humble words of my interpretation of what's going on and what God has done for us, everything is in that service. So I won't read the whole service to you, but I will be reading a large portion of it. So listen closely in case you weren't able to listen closely. There's a little holy water bottle to remind you exactly what is inside of this bottle. In the service, God talks to us about what he desires for us, what he has done for us, and what he is doing for us on the day of Theophany and in the blessing of the holy water. The service begins with readings from the Old Testament, from the book of Isaiah, in which he talks about his desire for us says, Thus says the Lord, My people shall see the glory of the Lord and the majesty of our God. Be strong, you loosened hands and feeble knees, you faint-hearted. Be strong, do not fear. Behold, our God will come and save us. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall hear. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb will speak clearly. For water shall birth, burst forth in the desert, in a valley in the thirsty land, the waterless desert shall become meadows, and the thirsty land springs of water. There will be gladness of birds, a habitation of reeds and marshes. Reminds me of Commonwealth Lake that we'll go to later today. A pure way shall be there, and it shall be called a holy way. The redeemed shall walk in it, and those gathered by the Lord shall return and come to Zion with gladness, with everlasting gladness over their head. For praise and exceeding joy will be on their head, and gladness shall possess them. Pain, sorrow, and sighing shall flee away. And in the second reading from Isaiah, we hear more of what God desires for us. It says, Thus says the Lord, incline your ears and follow my ways. Listen to me, and your soul shall live in good things, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. For as rain comes down or snow from heaven and saturates the earth and it brings forth and produces and gives seed to the sower and bread for food, so shall my word be whatever proceeds from my mouth. It shall not return until it accomplishes whatever it willed and I shall prosper your ways and my commandments. For you shall go forth with gladness and shall be taught with joy for the mountains and hills shall exult to receive you with joy. And all the trees of the field shall applaud you with their branches. And the Lord shall be for a name and for an everlasting sign, and he shall not fail. These are both from the book of Isaiah, telling of what God desires to do for us. And then we hear its fulfillment in what has been accomplished on that great theophany. And this is spoken so beautifully in the prayer that's offered by Patriarch Sophronius, the saint of the church, Sophronius, patriarch of Jerusalem. So I'll read a long portion from this prayer. Listen closely. Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son in the bosom of the Father, true God, source of life and immortality, light of light. And we hear the theme of light in this prayer. As you came into the world to enlighten it, illumine our minds with your Holy Spirit, and accept us as we offer you glory and thanksgiving for your wonderful, mighty works from all ages, and for your saving dispensation in these latter times, when you clothed yourself in our weak and poor substance and condescended to the place of a servant. You are the king of all, and yet you condescended to be baptized in the Jordan at the hands of a servant, having sanctified the nature of water, sinless one. You might lead us to a new birth, through water and the spirit, and restore us again to our first freedom. We celebrate the memory of this divine mystery and pray you, Lord and lover of mankind, 
According to your divine promise, sprinkle cleansing water upon us, your unworthy servants, as a gift of your compassion. We glorify you, O Master, who love mankind, almighty, pre-eternal King. We glorify you, the creator and maker of all. We glorify you, only begotten Son of God, born without father from your mother, and born without your mother from your father. In the preceding feast, we saw you born as a child, while in the present we behold you full grown, our God made manifest, perfect God and perfect man. From here, St. Sophronius offers a prayer that is very much like the homily of St. John Chrysostom on Pascha. Remember that homily so well when he says, Christ is risen and the gates of Hades are overthrown. Christ is risen. Again and again, this repetition. And then the other repetition, Hades was embittered. We say that again, it was embittered. And you all know these words, right? So listen here and say with me the word today as it's repeated each time. For today, the time of the feast is at hand. The choir of saints assembles with us and angels join with men in keeping festival. Today. The grace of the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove descended upon the waters. Today, Today, the sun that never sets has risen and the world is filled with the splendor by the light of the Lord. Today, Today, the uncreated of his own will accepts the laying on of hands from his own creature. Today, Today, the prophet and forerunner approaches the master but standing before him with trembling, seeing the condescension of God towards us. Today, Today, the waters of the Jordan are transformed into the healing by the coming of the Lord. Today, Today, the whole creation is watered by mystical streams. Today, Today, the transgression of men are washed away by the waters of the Jordan. Today, Today, paradise has been opened to men, and the sun of righteousness shines down upon us. Today, Today. the bitter water, as once with Moses and the people of Israel, is changed to sweetness by the coming of the Lord. Today, Today. we have been released from our ancient lamentation, and as the new Israel, we have found salvation. Today, Today, we have been delivered from darkness and illumined with the light of the knowledge of God. Today, Today. the whole creation shines with light from on high. Today, Today. the error is laid low and the coming of the master has made for us a way of salvation. Today, Today. the master hastens towards baptism that he may lift lift man up to the heights. Today, Today. he that bows not bows down to his own servant that he may set us free from bondage. Today, We have purchased the kingdom of heaven, for the Lord's kingdom shall have no end. Today, Today, the earth and sea share the joy of the world, and the world is filled with gladness. And then we have that turn, just like in the the homily of St. John Chrysostom. The waters saw you, O God. The waters saw you and were afraid. The Jordan turned back. The Jordan turned back. Seeing the fire of the Godhead descending bodily and entering into its streams, the Jordan turned back. The Jordan turned back. Beholding the Holy Spirit coming down in the form of a dove flying about you. The Jordan turned back. The Jordan turned back. Seeing the invisible made visible, the Creator made flesh, the Master in the form of a servant. The Jordan turned back. The Jordan turned back. And the mountains skipped, looking upon God in the flesh, and the clouds gave voice, marveling at him who was come, the light of light, true God of true God. For today in the Jordan they saw the triumph of the Master. They saw him drown in the Jordan, the death of disobedience, the sting of error, the chains of hell, and bestow upon the world the baptism of salvation. Therefore, sinner and unworthy servant though I am, I recount the majesty of your wonders, and seized with fear and compunction, cry aloud to you, Great are you, O Lord, and marvelous are your works, and no word will suffice to praise your wonders. And that's repeated three times. And you will know those words as well from the baptism service. Because at this point, the very same prayer that is it, the great blessing of the waters, is the same prayer that we have that blesses the waters of baptism. 
And that prayer, I won't read in length, but I'll read just a portion of it. It says, For by your will you have brought all things into being out of nothingness, and by your power you sustain all creation, and by your providence you direct the world. Then it goes on to extol all of God's greatness that he has done in creation. And then it continues saying, For you, O Master, through the tenderness of your mercy, could not endure the race of man tormented by the devil. But you came and saved us. We confess your grace. We proclaim your beneficence. We do not hide your mercy. You have set at liberty the generations of our nature. You sanctified the virginal womb by your birth. All creation praises you who manifested yourself. For you were seen upon the earth and sojourned with men. You sanctified the streams of the Jordan, sending down from heaven your Holy Spirit, and crushed the heads of the dragons that lurked therein. So we've heard all of the things that our God has done for us. And now we hear what he is going to do on this great day of theophany, on the great day of the blessing of the waters. And so the priest says three times, Do you yourself, O loving king, be present now also through the descent of your Holy Spirit and sanctify this water? And then the prayer continues, exactly the same prayer as at baptism. And give to it the grace of redemption, the blessing of the Jordan, make it a fountain of incorruption, a gift of sanctification, a loosing of sins, a healing of sicknesses, a destruction of demons unapproachable by hostile powers, filled with angelic might. May it be to those who draw from it and partake of it for the cleansing of their souls and bodies for the healing of their passions, for the sanctification of their homes, and for every good purpose. Master, now sanctify this water by your Holy Spirit. Grant to all who touch it, anoint themselves with it, and partake of it. Sanctification, blessing, cleansing, and health. And finally, we hear what we receive from the holy water in the litany itself that the deacon says during the great blessings. He says that this water might be hallowed by the might and the operation and descent of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord that there may be sent down upon it the grace of redemption, the blessing of Jordan. Let us pray to the Lord that we may be illumined with the light of knowledge and piety through the descent of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord that this water may become the gift of sanctification, the redemption of sins the healing of soul and body, and for every suitable purpose, let us pray to the Lord, that it may become water welling up unto eternal life, let us pray to the Lord, that this water may prove effectual for the averting of every plot of visible and invisible enemies, let us pray to the Lord, that it may be for purification of soul and body, for all who with faith take it and drink of it, let us pray to the Lord that we may be granted to be filled with sanctification through drinking this water by the invisible manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. This is what is occurring on great and holy theophany. With the great blessing of the waters, all of the waters of creation are sanctified in this very way. And this blessing of the waters extends to all of creation, not just to that which is in the holy water bottles, which has a special blessing and a special purpose within our spiritual lives, but all of the waters of creation are sanctified. It said in that prayer that water was changed. It said that water has the, he has sanctified the nature of water by his baptism in the Jordan. By his entry into the waters of the Jordan River, he has changed the water. All water is holy now. And through these prayers, we remember this. I'll close finally with the hymn that is sung at the very beginning of the <laughs> blessing of the waters. Because this hymn encapsulates all of those things in a very brief way that we receive from our Lord. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, crying out and saying, Come all and receive the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of the fear of God, yes, and of Christ, who has come in his epiphany. This feast is a great feast of revealing. And in that revealing, as we heard in the gospel today, it's a revealing from darkness into light. And this is why it's called the festival of light. And all of these themes of enlightenment and being illumined, and that our hearts may be lightened, because God's revelation is a bringing of light into the world.
Amen.